guys. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've talked to a camera. It almost feels so awkward. This bitch is driving with her left foot out the window, like by her side view mirror. There's a lot to catch you guys up on. It has been a minute. I have been missing making videos. I've been missing you guys. I have seen a few of your messages telling me that I need to come back to YouTube because you guys miss me. And that makes me feel really, really good. So thank you. Cause I feel like sometimes like I take a break and no one misses me at all, you know? And then I'm like, oh my God, that's so sad. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, well. Um, <laughs> anyways, I'm headed uh, over to get some injections done. I am no longer breastfeeding, which I'm gonna talk to you guys about too. There's just so much to catch up. I'm gonna try and make sure this isn't like an hour long video. But I'm driving up to see um, my girl Davina. She is like the only one I trust with my face. Um, I have a very specific like lip shape up here. Like my Cupid's bow is very like sharp and M shaped. And she has like been the only person that can inject that without like the filler transferring and moving up to my upper lip. So I'm going to her even though she's a little far for me, just a little bit. Um, it kills me to sit in the car for two hours total there and back while I have no children, like spending my time doing that. You know what I mean? Just like, ah. So yeah, I'm not breastfeeding anymore. I decided to call it quits on that uh, at the four month mark. Dude, what, homie, what are you doing? Okay, you need to go back to New Jersey without driving. Like I cannot deal with this. <laughs> this is unsafe for everybody. Um, uh, so I stopped breastfeeding at four months and I can go into a longer video about this if like you guys would like it. Okay, this, yeah, this guy is not, this is not working for me either. Um, all these big trucks keep like cutting me off. But I stopped breastfeeding at four months because it just became, just like with Harlow, it was just um, not doing any good for me or my baby anymore. Like I, Wyatt just was very, very impatient and come to find out the day after I stopped breastfeeding, I realized that I was using nipples that Harlow had like chewed. And so milk was coming out of them extremely fast. And so, um, I think he was just, he was getting very impatient. Like the first letdown would come and then you have to continue sucking for like a minute or more for the second letdown to come. And he wouldn't wait for that. He would just get really frustrated. When I stopped enjoying breastfeeding, my son and it became stressful and an annoyance and I started to feel resentment and annoyance towards a baby and my son I was like okay we're done like that's not what this is about like I want to enjoy my child and like this is not like I'm not going to just keep doing this because people think I should or whatever so if you're having a hard time and you know, give it, give it your best effort so you feel good about what you put in. But my advice to you is like, do not sacrifice your mental well being and your good feelings towards your child. Like you don't want to feel angry towards your child. Like there's enough of that that goes around when they don't let you sleep at night, you know, or whatever. It's just a very tiring time that tries your patience. So anyways, that's all I have to say on that. Could I like wear any more shades of pink today? Like you wait till you see my shoes. Like I gotta show you my shoes. <laughs> okay. I've been numbing for a while. It's looking really good. We're about to do some magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we're going to split up. Happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at all this. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, all the good. <laughs> $10,000 for the filters. $10,000. <laughs> um, I think she's gonna split up doing the lips like next time possibly, cause I gotta pick up the kiddos so I don't have a whole lot of time. I am so excited. Thank you so much to Davina and her team for like, making this possible like I just like feel and look like I'm like a little swollen and stuff but I just feel and look like so much more like plump and glowy and like like plump in the good ways you know what I mean I'm uh in the process of like losing some Harlow baby weight but um yeah I'm looking and feeling really good so I'm so freaking excited and just so stoked that I got to 
do this and I'm just super grateful that I got to have my little mommy makeover and it's not even over. She wants to do like more stuff like possibly some threads and who knows. She is like really good at what she does so honestly I'm kind of like one of those people that's like you know what you just do whatever you want to do. I realized I probably should tell you what I had done. I don't know all the technical terms. Davina is the one for all of that. But I had Botox across the top and around my eyes. Genetically, I just have like a lot of wrinkles around my eyes when I smile. Um, and I got filler in my nasal labia fold. So she did injection there and an injection there. And then she did some like around the center of my eye where those wrinkles start to go like this underneath your eye and that just looks like more plump. Um, I believe she did some evening out of my, um, try not to touch it, of my uh, like bone here. Like she said it was a little fuller on this side. So she added more on this side to kind of make it a little more symmetrical. Like it will never be symmetrical, but like a little more. And then she did some chin filler. actually have to pluck some eyebrow hairs out of here. That's crazy. You guys never thought you'd see the day. I never thought I'd see the day. Shit. Okay. Let me tell you something. This is not sponsored, but I wish it was. I got sent this Grande Lash Serum and they have a brow one too. So I've been using the brow one and then I had these random hairs that I got to start plucking out. So obviously it's doing something, but the crazier part is I had a very bald spot in my lashes, like right here. And, and I felt like I always had to wear fake lashes because I would have that, I would put my mascara on and then there would be like nothing right there. I've been using this Grande Lash just like periodically, like not even religiously. Like I've been using it just a few times a week when I remember. And it has literally grown that patch in. Like I put mascara on the other day and I was like, something's different here. And I was like, dude, I'm not missing lashes in that one part anymore. So it, this works. Let's talk a little bit about why I've taken a break from, well, why I took a break from social media. And I, it, th this break might continue a little bit. I don't, oh shit. I don't really know, but, um, everything that's been going on in the world right now has been quite depressing. It's all over social media and um it is just honestly just super depressing and i think i've got a bit of postpartum depression going on i every day is a little bit different i feel like i have gotten a little bit better now that harlow is in daycare full time i um really needed that i have been really enjoying spending time with wyatt completely solo with no distractions. It's been like beautiful and like super necessary. The lady at the daycare asked me one day, knowing that no sugar, so why would I allow this? But she's like, hey, can I give her a sugar-free Pop-Tart? And I was like, we're gonna have problems. There are so many preservatives in there. Like I feed my kid really healthy. Like every now and then she gets some, you know, chicken nuggets or French fries, or I mean, you gotta live a little. I'm not. I'm not freaking psycho, but I was just like, okay. And there's just so many things about this daycare that I'm like, okay, we can improve upon this. So anyways, long story short, um, we are buying a house with my stepmom and my dad. They are currently living in Arizona. They are going to be, so we're gonna buy a house together and she is going to open a daycare and my children are gonna go to this daycare. And um, she used to run a daycare when I was little. She knows what she's doing. She's really good at it. She's amazing with her kids. And I'm like, 
great it's a great investment opportunity first of all the daycare literally pays the mortgage so that's what we're going to look at a house today for and i'm really excited about that because honestly i don't think that i would have more children based on the fact that daycare is so effing expensive and not only that but you just don't know what's going on at other like you know what i mean like i just can't trust someone to be with my child all day long like I just, I don't know if they're, are they upholding like our pleases and our thank yous and like our man, you know what I mean? Like just all that stuff. Like it's just, if you're a parent, like you understand. And if you're not a parent, I feel like you could understand. I have been seriously underwater. Um, so we had a full-time nanny who is amazing. She's actually in town. She's going to come see the kids on Sunday so I can go out with my friend, but I have had a lot of life changes the past couple years. I'll just run through them really quick. I bought a house with Nick. I moved back across the country. Piper, our golden retriever, attacked and killed while I was pregnant with Harlow, my pride and joy, my little Leo, my dog. Um, and I sold my shares in my company and that was like my identity. Like that company was my heart and soul and trying to like find myself again after that i'm like and not like making any income anymore is super weird because like if you're anything like me we are very ambitious we'd like to be working we'd like to see that money coming in and i just it was like my it was like my purpose like it was my thing and then i had a miscarriage that was really tough um i also went through a divorce uh before all of that stuff and so honestly it's just been a lot going on and then i had a baby and that's a whole new life change and dynamic too and really hard on your relationship and then i almost i like i thought i had another miscarriage like i'm pretty sure harlow was a twin um i don't know if you've seen that video but that's crazy i'll link it for you below um, can you imagine two Harlows running around? Oh my gosh, I might actually die. Die of cuteness and then also die because I'm getting run so ragged. <laughs> um, then we had another baby and he is five months old right now and we've got two under two and we are in the thick of it. It is, it is a lot. Um, I actually have a video coming out that is like everything I wish I knew before I had to, or what you need to know basically for two under two. And it's everything that I have learned, um, that I wasn't really prepared for. And I'm going to be completely honest. Our nanny that I was talking about, I got sidetracked. Um, she moved out of the country on December 21st. And so I haven't had um, much help since then. And it's been tough, uh, with my first responders, my firefighters schedule. Um, and Harlow's actually at a really tough age right now. I was told that from now she's 20 months to like three, they're just really difficult. So she's been very like testy, you know, um, and then with the baby, it's really hard too. And so we're going through all these changes and I just like, was like, dude, I don't have time to take care of these children, my animals, myself. Like I'm finally trying to start getting into a routine. I think a routine would do wonders for me. So I've honestly think I've had a little bit of like postpartum depression. I feel like I'm like, don't have a purpose anymore. Like obviously my purpose right now is to be my children's mother. But like, besides that, like, who am I? Like, what's my purpose? What does my content look like anymore? Like what is going on? I've just been losing followers for the past like freaking five years. I was like literally at like 998,000 followers on Instagram. And now it's just like dwindling every day. I like lose followers. So I'm like, trying not to give a shit about that, but like trying to just deal with all these changes. This is the only bruise I got from my injections the other day, which look awesome by the way. I don't know if you can tell, but like, I'm just more plump and like, it just looks good. Side note, Wyatt has been waking, he's got a going through sleep regression right now. He's been waking up every 20 to 40 minutes, every single night and I'm dead. I'm dead inside. good to have like clean hair 
all the things. I have started reading again recently and I'm pretty excited about it because reading for me has always been one of those things that like I love to do. I love to get lost in a fun like mystery, magical, whatever book, but I always find like a TV show to watch or something. So perfect time to grab a book. We were at the store getting some stuff for Harlow to do while we were on our way to go camp last week in the desert and I was like this is going to be a perfect time because there's going to be moments where they're both sleeping where I am just at camp like by myself while Nick is off riding his dirt bike and I can just zone out so I was trying to watch Harlow in the store she was going crazy doing something but I saw this book and the name Magic Hour and the cover just like totally caught my attention and I like breezed through the back like I couldn't really read much of it but um I'll give you a little tidbit there's basically um a small town a uh, cop she's like a, a chief and she um comes upon this like five or six year old little girl who like looks like she was raised by wolves and she's got like a wolf pup under her arm and she's in a tree and she has like ligature marks on her legs and like grimy doesn't seem to know english um, and so this cop is like, okay, I gotta call my sister who's a therapist. Um, and she is going through some shit because one of her, um, one of her clients did like committed a terrible crime. And so she had to go to court for it. And so she's going through all this drama and she comes back to the small town that she grew up in to help her sister, who's the chief of police, like with this little girl. So I'm left off where they're trying to figure out who this girl is, where she came from. Um, and the weather changed drastically when she showed up in town. So you don't know if it's like magic or if it's like, you don't know. So I love books like that. So if you like books like that, then I highly recommend this one right here. I also like her name. She spells it wrong, but you know, whatever. Good morning, cuteness. Well, afternoon almost. Look at your little bandana. He's finally learned how to bounce himself in this thing. Yeah. Try on haul. Okay, camera, don't fall over. Don't fall over like I did at the OFD Christmas party last year. Because I was way too fucking blasted. Some stuff from the garden. Oh, I've been growing sugar snap peas. Mmm. I think, uh... Mm, you're such a good snack. I think I might make a chopped salad with those tonight. Look at this bok choy leaf. My garden is like crushing it. There are aphids on this. We have a dog named Piper. If you're not new here, you know that. She is around three and a half years old. We've had her since she was eight weeks old. She, um, attacked our cat two weeks ago around now a little more than that about three weeks ago and this is the fourth animal that she has attacked um our cat is okay luckily he's like a fucking scrapper that's like why he's okay but um if you didn't know and you haven't been here for a long time um when i was pregnant with my firstborn harlow um she attacked my dog, my pride and joy. I had a five pound Pomeranian named Leo and um, she attacked him in the middle of the night and killed him. And that was probably one of the nice, worst nights of my life. And so she's progressively just gotten like non tolerant at all of any sort of like nipping or bullying um, from other dogs, which is kind of what Leo did to her. We tried to intervene. That's a whole other story, but unfortunately um, it did not end well. And um, she's gotten worse with her resource guarding. We have spent thousands of dollars on training. We have gotten the opinions of multiple um, animal behaviorists and they have su suggested and recommended that we find her a new home um so that is what we were doing i just i've gotten so many con like i posted on next door to try and find her a wonderful home she needs to be in a home without small children without small dogs or animals um and i have i post on next door and um hello enjoying that cocktail oh, yeah thank you nice um, and a bunch of people are like, oh, you should get her training or whatever. But unfortunately, like 
going down that road, first of all, we've already spent thousands of dollars in training, but going down that road would make it like I would have to manage it and like monitor her. And like, unfortunately when I'm here alone with both of the kids and the three cats and stuff and Nick's at work or whatever, it's really hard to pay attention to everything that's going on. Like she could even be outside and a morsel of food will drop. And if there's another animal there, or like what if there's a kid there crawling up? Um, this is our little scrapper. So he's got these like scabs on his neck. Um, we were not here when this happened actually. The dog behaviorist was, so it was perfect. But um, she had basically like eaten her food and dropped a couple kibble on the ground. And he came up to eat it when she wasn't even there and she stood over him and then she attacked him. And unfortunately with Piper, like she doesn't like really give you much warning other than like some body language. So if you're not watching her, it's very easy to miss. And it's just, yeah, it's tough, it's tough. It's a really tough decision to make. I'm sure many of you watching this have had to make similar decisions where you've had to rehome a dog because of your children. And you know, it's just, I'm not gonna just sit around and wait till it happens to one of my kids and they potentially like die or lose their entire face because I fail to ignore everything that's going on. I'm gonna enjoy my coffee right here. Um, are any of you guys watching The Bachelor? Switching gears, you like that segue? How good was that? Not at all. Joey's like so hot, but I feel like he's like 5'7". We're gonna go pick up Harlow in a few minutes here. Oh! <laughs> Can I have a hug? Oh, cat! Can I have a hug? Go hug mommy, please. Daddy. Mommy needs a hug. Can I have a hug? Oh, he's daddy. Why are you doing daddy the whole time here? Come over here, you little snot nose. Harlow. <laughs> I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day or evening or whatever time it is and we will um I'll see you later guys bye just sing with me leave everything for me Stay the night, oh, miss your flight.